Hey, today I thought we would talk about contributing to open source software, fixing your own tools, and even how to make a pull request. Welcome back everybody. I'm still a little gravelly uh, from my bout with COVID, but that's not gonna stop us from learning how to program. And today's video is made possible by all the wonderful people who support the channel on Patreon through buying merch like this and in other ways. Links down in the description for ways that you can contribute if you're finding this content helpful. Now back to our topic at hand. Specifically, we're talking about open source software, which is something that I've brought up in past videos. I've talked about how it's a great way to get experience, which can be tough early on, especially if you're self-taught or if you haven't had a programming job before, you're trying to prove to someone that you can actually do things. Open source is a really great option for how to get involved and how to get some experience on some real code. But some of you have wondered to me, how do I get involved? How do I actually contribute? How do I become part of the open source community? And while there are a lot of different ways that you could get involved today, I wanna to show you one simple way that you can get involved, or at least a way that you can get started. And I picked this topic today because this is something that I'm doing anyway. It's something I need to do. And so I thought I'd take you along for the ride. So let's take a look. So this is the project that we're looking at today. It's MSP Debug, which I've used in some of my past embedded systems videos. It's a tool that I use for programming and debugging MSP430 microcontrollers, and it's great. I really like it. I wanna make clear, no one is sponsoring this video. No one's paying me to say nice things about them. This is just a tool that I love and use. But the other day, one of my students was trying to download and compile it and ran into a problem. And with a proprietary tool, we would have just tinkered around with a bit. If we couldn't figure it out, we would have complained to the company, maybe sent them a support request, maybe look for a workaround, and then we would either have had to wait for them to fix it, or we maybe we found another product that would solve our problem. But with open source tools like MSP Debug, we have another option. We can go ahead and fix the problem, which means we can be the change we want to see in the world and contribute. And so that's what I'm going to do today, both because I need this tool to keep working for me, but also because I think it might be helpful for some of you to see how you can contribute to the greater software good out there. And so let's see how this works. The first thing that I'm going to do before I get started is I want to come in here and fork this repository. Now this right here, I'm going to do it under Sorber. Uh, this right here is going to make Make a separate copy of the repository. And I'm gonna use this copy to do my own debugging and my fixing. And then if I'm able to get things sorted out, then I can issue a pull request to push the fix back to the original repository. And maybe it pushes the wrong word, pull request. Anyway, it gets a little confusing, but the idea is I'm gonna make a change and I'm gonna to try to provide it back to the original community. Okay, so now the fork is complete. You can see it's over here under Sorber. So I actually have a separate copy. It's a fork of the original. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to clone this repository to my local machine. Okay, now at this point, I am assuming that you have all have some familiarity with Git. I've been meaning to make a Git video for, for some time now, and at some point I'm gonna get to it, but for now there are a lot of good resources out there on Git, so please check them out if anything I do is confusing. But here, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to clone this repository into a temporary folder that I happen to be using just for temporary fixes. This isn't something I'm gonna keep around permanently. But so I have cloned this, my fork of MSP debug, and then I'm going to come into that repository and let's just open it up in my editor. Okay, so here we go. We've got it opened up in the editor. Let me just open things up a little bit, this out of the way. Now, up to this point, we haven't really talked about what the issue is. So let's take a quick look and see how the how this issue manifests itself. All I told you was that my students were having trouble compiling. You can notice here that uh, they are using make. There is a make file in this project. So if I just come in here and say make, let's see what happens. It's gonna go through and try to compile a bunch of the different pieces. This isn't a huge project, but it does have a few different pieces. And you notice we come down here and it's having trouble on line 203 in this under transport. So here we can look at transport and RF2500 hid API.c. Okay, so in here, if we come down here to line 203, you can see right here that what it's saying is, hey, you're calling this function, but you have too few arguments for this function call. It expects five, but you're only passing in two. And that's kind of weird. It's like, okay, I wonder how this came about. Let's first take a look at where this this is actually being declared. Looks like it's being declared in rf2500.h. So let me just keep this open because I am going to want to keep it open. And then we'll come out here and you can see in here that here is where this function is defined or declared, I should say. And you notice that it is declared with five different arguments. 
So the device path and the requested serial. So these are two paths that I believe that's what we were actually passing in. Looks like it. And then there's these others. Basically, it looks like one that's saying, asking if we are providing a VID and PID. And if so, then passing those in. Okay, so let's take a quick look. Now, I'm going pretty fast through this. I actually did some digging around to try to see what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. But if we come back to this function, you notice that, that well, there are, there are, a striking similarity between the arguments that are being passed to this RF2500 hit API open function. The arguments look exactly the same as what we're going to pass to RF open. It just looks like when this got updated, it looks like this call didn't actually get changed. And it turns out that this function in this code right here only gets compiled on Mac OS. And so it's very possible that whoever made this update thought they had caught everything, but they didn't actually test it on a Mac. And so they run into this problem. So let's make this fix at least what I think is should be my fix. And that is actually wait, pause, hold that really quick before I do any fixes. Now, generally, when I'm working on a new feature or a bug fix, I'm going to want to work in a different branch, right? I like to have a separate branch. So before I actually go make any fixes, let's come in here and use get checkout to make a new branch. And I'm going to call this fix hit API bug. Okay, so we're going to call this our fix hit API bug. You can see here that now it's telling me I am now in this new branch. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and actually make this fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass these in um, the, the exact arguments that were passed in here, vid ID and PID ID. Okay, these are USB parameters. I won't go into details about what feature was actually uh, required these changes, except the fact that they want to be able to specify USB devices by ID, not just by device path, which is great. Nothing wrong with adding flexibility to a tool. But so I think this is actually going to fix my problem. I've saved it. Let's come in here and just verify anytime you fix anything in a project where you're working with other people. I mean, really, anytime you fix a bug period, you want to verify that it actually works. So let's try to run make again and just see what we've got. And you can see, OK, it's taking a little while, but that's OK. And then we come down here and it looks like it worked just fine. So we know it compiles, that's great. Also, I'm not gonna show this really quick in the interest of time, but I also went through and tested it with my normal workflow and everything seems to be working just fine. So at this point, I have some confidence, not 100% confident, but I have some confidence that this fix works. And so now let's go ahead and look at how we contribute it back. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just add this change. So we're gonna add transport RF20. Okay, so this is our file. And then I'm going to commit the change and say fix API compile bug. So it was missing bit ID, bit ID, PID arguments. Okay, so we'll call it that. Okay, at this point, we have now added it, we have committed it, we made sure that we added a message that sensibly described the fix that we're making. And then at this point, I'm going to push it to my branch, I'm going to do get push origin and then fix hit API bug. So this is going to push it back to my branch. That is my, my bug fix branch. Okay, now at this point, we're going to switch back to GitHub and take a quick look at where this puts us. Okay, now you're gonna notice something interesting that has happened since I pushed. Now GitHub says, hey, look, there's a recent push here. And it says, there's a button here that says compare and pull request. Okay, this is what I'm gonna to want to use. And all I'm going to do is it's going to pop up here, a form that allows me to submit a pull request. Basically, you know, it's saying, I want to merge the change that I've made in this fix hit API bug branch back to the main branch of Daniel Beer's MSP debug repository. So that all looks great. I have my description right here, my comment, that looks fine. I don't have any problems with that. I can come down here and leave additional comments fixed a bug that was preventing compilation on Mac OS I could add more for now I'm going to just leave it at this also if you want to come down here you can take a look this highlights you know we want to just double check that we've actually fixed the bug in the way we think we did and we didn't include anything other than this one change so the change is just one line this is what the original author is going to see the original owner when Daniel sees this he's going to be able to see what I'm pushing and if he likes it or not maybe he knows more about this code and he says this actually isn't the appropriate fix for this and he can reject it that's fine Daniel no hard feelings if you don't accept my pull request but I'm trying to help you out and 
And then if we come up here, then once we're satisfied that things are the way we want them, then I can come in here and I can say, create pull request. Okay, so now this comes down here. There is a pull request. This has been pushed over to the original repository. And now it just has to wait until we actually get approval from someone who actually has credentials, someone who has permission to accept this pull request. And so we'll just wait and see what happens. But at this point, I've done my part to contribute to this repository, and I hope they find it helpful. But whether or not they do, more importantly, I hope you found this helpful as an example of how you can find a project, preferably something you care about something you use, something that's meaningful to you, and find something that's wrong with it. Find some way to improve it. Maybe it's more than just this single line fix, but this might be a good place to start. But then you can contribute code changes that you think will make the project better, submit them back, and if they get accepted, well, guess what? You're now an author or a part author in a open source project. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something from it. And until next week, I'll see you later.